Straight ahead on WBKB, walk-in COVID vaccinations are being held in Alpena this week. Plus, the library is getting ready to celebrate the city's anniversary and see what's left over in turkey hunting season. You're watching Thunder Bay News Network. WBKB News at 6 starts now. This is WBKB News at 6. An in-depth look at news, weather, and sports. From hard-hitting news stories to local events, we're there with coverage you can count on. You're watching WBKB News at 6. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Tyler Cruz. And I'm Sherry Stewart. Attorney General Dana Nessel has declined a request from state senators to investigate Governor Whitmer. Eight Republicans raised concerns to Nessel's office over Whitmer's handling of COVID patients in nursing homes. This includes her policies, the accuracy of the data, and compliance with CDC and Freedom of Information guidelines. Nessel responded to these four areas specifically. In her response, the AG says she will not hesitate to act when justified, but she will not abuse her powers to launch a political attack on any state official. A copy of Nessel's letter and the request sent to the Attorney General will be on our website. And if you're over 60 and having trouble registering for a COVID-19 vaccine, you now have the chance to get a shot without an appointment. This Thursday, March 18th, District Health Department number four will be hosting a walk-in vaccination clinic at the Alpena Mall. Individuals must be a resident of Alpena, Sheboygan, Montmorency, or Presque Isle County. Moderna vaccines will be available from 10 a.m. to 12 noon or while supplies last. Vaccinations will be issued by a first-come, first-serve basis. The Alpena City Council will resume talks to contract its fire services to the township. The Township Board of Trustees agreed that Supervisor Nathan Skibby would reach out to the city. He says this open discussion will give the Township more options. We're just going to have all, uh, a very good conversation and look at uh, potential options. We need to do our due diligence. This is just one more step of looking at all the facts on the table so that we can, as a collected board, make a uh, good decision for the safety of our residents. The city was originally hired by the township earlier this year to help address the township's staffing crisis. Some township trustees say one option is the possibility of the fire department restructuring on its own. Spring is in the air and that means the allergies are coming, but because of the pandemic, how do you know the difference between allergies and COVID-19? Medical experts say some people do get symptoms confused. The main warning signs of COVID-19 are fever, fatigue and a dry cough. Sometimes it also causes cold like symptoms like a runny nose. Signs of allergies include stagnant symptoms like itchy or watery eyes and sniffles for more than a week. One medical doctor states says states may see an increase in COVID-19 testing as the weather changes. I won't be surprised if I start seeing that in the near future as we are going to kick into allergy season. If you get allergies every year, watch out for symptoms that are different from what you've experienced before. If you feel seriously concerned about how you feel, you're advised to call a medical professional. A group of Michigan doctors is calling on state Republicans to utilize over $2 billion in federal funding. $2 billion in, fed in funds from a Trump administration stimulus package was left on the table in the latest state-funded relief bill. Republicans have said they will not meet with Governor Whitmer to allocate these funds unless they also negotiate her pandemic powers. Today, Michigan physicians called on state Republicans to work with Whitmer to fully utilize these funds for vaccinations and to help reopen Michigan. That there will come a time in the future where it will be appropriate for the Republicans to wage political battles against the governor. But now is not that time, not when people's lives are at stake. We're so close to the finish line. Aside from vaccinations, the funding would also help schools, local businesses, and the state's testing and tracing abilities. Doctors also say that increased funds for vaccinations are the best chance we have at getting out of the pandemic. 
The city of Alpena is coming up on its 150th anniversary. The library is celebrating with a historic presentation. Don LaBear of the Library Special Collections will give a digital presentation on the city's history later this month. He'll cover the way the region's changed from native hunting grounds to bustling lumber town to shipwreck sanctuary. When it was first survey, it was, you know, this is worthless land to 1850s. All of a sudden, this land was worth, you know, in today's standards, billions of dollars worth of uh, natural resources. Labar gives his presentation on March 29th at 6 p.m. The city will host him on their GoTo meeting account. More information will be available on the library's website in the coming week. That's really interesting. Very Happy birthday, nice. Alpina. Early birthday. Mm -hmm. As spring approaches, so does hunting for turkeys, and the licenses are what's left over. If you didn't apply for a license or weren't successful in the drawing, licenses are now available. For a longer season, private land hunters in southern Michigan can purchase a special license called a Hunt Unit ZZ. There are additional licenses allowing hunting the entire month of May on public and private lands. For more information, you can visit our website. There's more news ahead for you here on WBKB. Coming up, Michigan Sportsbooks raked it in during their first full month of betting. Stay tuned. Into the middle 20s. Tomorrow morning will be in the 30s. Highs for tomorrow generally in the lower to middle 40s. But even warmer temperatures are on the way in the extended forecast along with brighter skies as well over the coming days. More on that coming up later in the newscast. Thanks, Ellie. I can't wait for the sun to be like I a full-time job up here. Yeah. <laughs> well, in one full month of online sports betting in Michigan, how much money do you think was wagered? The total? Over $300 million in online sports bets alone. With Super Bowl betting playing a role, Michiganders wagered $301.9 million on sports online and another $23 million in person. These numbers fly Michigan past Indiana as a top five betting market in the United States in less than 40 days. After payouts, promotions, and funds kept by the sports books, the state of Michigan will be able to use over $142,000 in revenue. It's kind of interesting. A, it, very, it, it really <laughs> is. And health news, uneven use of telehealth during the pandemic and why doctors should discuss diet with expectant mothers. Elise Preston has some of the day's top health stories. A mother's diet during pregnancy could have a long-term impact on her child's weight. A study in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition used data collected from food questionnaires. Diets that may increase inflammation were associated with faster BMI growth rates in children ages 3 to 10, and lower adherence to a Mediterranean diet was associated with higher BMI through adolescence. A study in the Journal of the American College of Cardiology found some progress has been made in racial disparities in heart disease, high blood pressure, and diabetes death rates in the last 20 years. Researchers say most of those modest gains were in urban areas, but black adults in rural areas have higher mortality rates from high blood pressure and diabetes. Telehealth visits during the pandemic occurred mostly among those who were more affluent and lived in metropolitan areas. A Rand Corporation study found in-office visits to lower 50s. And today's photo was sent in by Linda Nisha Klimchak. She says she thought the raccoons were eating the bird seed. Turns out we have photographic proof of at least one local deer wanted for robbing bird seed taken in Alpena. Thank you, Linda, for sending us this photo. If you have a photo such as nature shots, pics with friends or interesting sites you see that you would like to send us, email it along with a short description to news at WBKB11.com. I'll keep an eye out on my bird feeder for the suspect. Yes, that's a determined <laughs> deer, very determined. And one of my favorite things about Pets of the Week are the themes that they usually have. Let's see if you guys can get this one. Today's pets are Coach, Jerry West, and Larry Bird. Meet Coach. He's just over a year old and one of the sweetest cats I've ever met. I actually had trouble getting footage because he would keep following me behind the camera. This little fella loves being the center of attention and would do best as the only animal in the home. When he takes a seat in your lap, he feels like a weighted blanket. Next up is Jerry West. He's a recent arrival who's still getting to know the shelter. He's a little skittish, but warms up to you easily. He's incredibly fluffy, so there's a chance he might be a Maine Coon mix. Finally, say hello to Larry Bird. His body language is a bit more reserved than Jerry's, but he's far more vocal. 
His distinguishing feature is the scar on his nose. He's had some hard times, but he has plenty of love to give. Larry's very receptive to petting, so he may have a future as a lap cat. The Humane Society is always looking for forever homes. You can find a link to their page on our website. Now, as a Celtics fan, that's not really what I remember Larry no. Bird looking like. <laughs> Sports is coming up next, but first, Jake Vanderbrook is here with a preview. Jake, what's going on tonight? Coming up next in sports, regional hockey begins tonight, and we have one area team that's in action. Find out who. Plus, we're just over two weeks away from opening day for Major League Baseball, and the Detroit Tigers made some cuts. One of those five players might be a surprise to you. I'll let you know who. Up next in sports. Welcome back. The popular South by Southwest Film Festival goes online today. And we get a glimpse of what's happening in the Heights. Nichelle Medina has your Eye on Entertainment report. Warner Brothers has released two new trailers for its upcoming musical drama, In the Heights. They used to say, you work hard, you live by the rules, the things will come, and those things will heal you. Based on Lin-Manuel Miranda's Tony Award-winning Broadway musical, the film follows three days in the life of a New York City store owner who inherits a fortune from his grandmother. In the Heights hits theaters and HBO Max June 18th. This year's South by Southwest Film Festival goes online today through Saturday. Among the 75 features, introducing Selma Blair, a documentary chronicling a year in the life of actress Selma Blair as she fights her battle against multiple sclerosis. The film arrives on Discovery Plus later this year. Investigative journalist David Holdhouse searches for Bigfoot decades after hearing a story about three men killed in Northern California in the documentary Sasquatch. The the film also debuts as a three-part series on Hulu on April 20th. I'd been in a band my whole life, <laughs> it felt like. And another documentary, Tom Petty, Somewhere You Feel Free, follows the late rocker with never-before-seen footage as he created his Wildflowers album. You can sign up for South by Southwest on the festival's website. And Amanda Bynes proves that girls can do anything guys can do in the film She's the Man. Bynes plays Viola, who disguises herself as her twin brother and joins the boys' soccer team. Paramount has released She's the Man on Blu-ray, DVD, and digital to celebrate the film's 15th anniversary. That's your eye on entertainment. Nichelle Medina, CBS News, Los Angeles. <clears throat> That's all we have for you this evening. You can read more about our broadcast stories and get the scoop on other news items online. Just visit WBKB11.com for sports, weather, and news updates anytime, day or night. And check us out on our Facebook page and Twitter handle at WBKB11. Be sure to catch us back here tonight at 11 with Stephanie Manici. Have a great evening.